it's Kimberly Keller. Welcome. Um, so it's not 1.30, it's like 1.37, 38. And I have been making a contraption. If you looked at my video feed earlier today, you saw that I was going to be introducing a new character because Grayson and I are trying to really follow the the rules so that we can uh, bust this curve and make that high curve come down if you don't know what that means that's a math term and I don't always do math but you could ask your mom about that and she could show you what that means on a graph and um, so Grayson's not here today but I brought out of retirement my dear friend Orangey I'm going to introduce you to Orangey. Do you like the lighting better? On one of my sites, I wrote um, that I was going to try to get some brighter lighting, and I'll bring this up closer to you so you could see it a little bit better, and um, that I would look better in this lighting, and so that's my plan. And so I got out some uh, lighting tools, and they look like this. This is my fancy, budget-friendly lighting tool. I have these in my studio sometime to create shadows, to add black lights to things, and um, depending on where I've been, sometimes an area in my studio is too dark, so I hook these up and I connect them, I press like that, and, and I shine the light on. So I have some of those on to try to brighten up this section. And then that way maybe you can see a little bit better. Uh, they make fancy ones on TV, but like I said, this is the budget-friendly show. And so that's what we're doing, the budget-friendly show uh, with Orangey. Yay. And paint with me, Kimberly Keller. I'm so excited that y'all are here. And whoever is online with me, yay. One view, yay. Later on, this will go tonight to my website um it will go to my website my webster i call her my webster shada is from calamar designs has fixed it up so that it will go tonight not till tonight but it'll go tonight to my website so that if you miss it or you want to redo it or uh, something like that, then you could do it then on my website. So that would be cool. It will be on my Facebook, Paint With Me, Kimberly Keller. Paint With Me, Kimberly Keller. All the other names were taken. The good ones were taken. I'm sorry, that's the way it rolls. So today we're going to be painting orangey. I have a cat up because I, I don't have orangey up. I don't know where my painting is from orangey. But um, we're going to make a new one. That's my springboard. My idea today is with orangey. And I'll, I'll show you orangey in a few minutes. The cat, I thought, you know what would be fun? If I took my paintings and paint supplies out of the studio, took them home sometime, and we painted cats. And you know, I have all my cats at my house. I have four that live in the house with me. And then Sherman, our dog. And I thought, let's just paint cats one day and let them all wander around while we're painting. Won't that be fun? So that's going to come up. I've got um, a sewing machine. I, hey, Becky Fisher, I'm glad you're here. Hooray! And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a sewing machine. I have a sewing machine. I'm a seamstress, too. I can sew anything. I can sew a car. It's not safe, but I can sew one. And uh, I'm going to show you on one of these episodes coming up here pretty shortly how to sew a mask. Won't that be fun? And we can help those out that don't have masks or that need a mask, even like to just go to HEB or Walmart or wherever it is they pick up their groceries. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I've got a uh, pastel lesson, a pastel lesson planned. So if you don't have pastels, but you have chalk, you're in. 
it's a good day to do that. I'm trying to do these on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and on Tuesday and Thursday, I will do other things. Cleaning is on the list, but it's always on the list, is it not? Can I get an amen? I'm just saying. Cleaning is always on the list. So I've got my painting. We're going to get started here. I think I've given everyone a chance to hop on. I got nine watchers. Whoop, whoop. Thank you for watching. It's exciting. And so we're going to start with a warm up. Oh, oh, you're going, where is Orangey? Orangey. He's over here. I'll get him. Hang on. Orangey sometimes is a little shy. Here's Orangey. Oh, Orangey is right here. Yay. Orangey, do you see him? Yeah, you do. I know you do. I'm so excited that you're here. He is excited. No, they, they, they are on, they are in quarantine. We're all in quarantine. I know it's going to be fine. We just have to do this. This is just part of what we have to do right now. We have to keep our distance from each other. No, not you and I. You and I are buds. We're like family. We've been together through thick, thin, and all those other things. Remember when we taught kindergarten? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We taught kindergarten, and we did the calendar, and we did lots of other little wonderful things. Those were good times. Yes, they were. They were best times. They were great times. You even came to the high school once or twice, didn't you? Yeah, that's what I thought you did. Yeah. So Orangey and I are going to paint today and we're going to paint a monkey. And so that's exciting. Now, Orangey, you're going to be watching some, right? And um, if you think of something, you let me know that that I forgot to say. All right. We're excited that you're here. I'm going to Flip over, you get your pencil ready, get a pencil or something to write with and a blank piece of paper, just a piece of paper that you can practice on. By the way, there are supplies still in the bucket. I went and looked this morning and I added some more um, bags of supplies. So if you don't have a bag of supplies or you know of someone who needs a bag of supplies, there's a bag of supplies in the back. There, the things that I have here in the studio, so they're just free. You take them and you just do what you need to do with them so that you're enjoying your time uh, doing the homeschool, homeschool public school. So we're just learning together. It'll be exciting. All right, Orangey, you sit right here. Here's kind of where Orangey hangs out, just so you know. He kind of hangs out right here. Isn't he adorable? And Orangey, he's showing you his feet. You, what? No, we never hear any evil. And I know we don't see evil and we don't speak evil on this. That's true. That is true. We're trying to not do that. And um, he's waving. So I hope y'all are waving too. He's waving at you. He's hilarious. All right, Orangey. Oh, no. He brought up his tail. He says he has a tail. No, don't show the whole thing. This is a family show. All right. All right. So here we go. He's clapping. Here we are. Now, those of you that are ready, we've got to find, oh yes, we're going to do this sheep. Let me show you this sheep. We're going to start with this doodle right here. This little doodle looks like a cloud, looks like a rectangle. Then we're going to add the head. I'll do it with you in a moment. So hang in there. And then we're going to add some feet. Look at those feet. They look like ice cream cones. Aren't they adorable? Then we're going to add some ears, and we've added the eye. And we're going to make it a little bit fluffier by making repetition. You know, one of the art words that you learn is repetition. And so we're going to repeat that process again. See how the ear overlaps? This is adorable. All right. Now, let me get this started. And we've got our wipe and write boards. Sometimes, you know, when we have been drawing on our wipe and write boards, we just use um, clipboards. Clipboards work great for that. And you get a wipe and write marker. If you don't have one of these at home, just use a 
regular old everyday. Is there a way to make that shorter? I think so. I've got it on super up high. Can y'all see? I push that back just a little bit so y'all can see. I'm going to draw it right here. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to draw is a little scoop. Almost looks like a cloud or the number three. This is our warm up for today. And then after that part, we're going to add on our head. Okay. So when we add on our head, it looks like the letter U laying on its side, scoop around and close. Make a little eye right there. Cute, cute, cute. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the feet. Now they look like little ice cream cones. There are four of them. Go ahead and do four of them. One. Two. Three. Four. Pretty cute, pretty cute, pretty cute. Orangey, what do you think? Good job. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Good job. I do love them. I do love them. Can you see now? Very good. And now let's do this. And this next one, it just has an ear. And the ear there. Now they colored this in black. If you don't have black, use whatever color you've got. There's a little dot in the center. Looking pretty cute. Looking pretty cute. And then this last one is that repetition. Remember, repetition is something that artists use. And do you want to do it with me? All right, well then hang on. Let me get, let me help you. All right, ready? Let me take your hand. Hold your, hold it right in here like this. Ready? And then we're going to go... Scoop, 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 scoop. Perfect. There's your sheep. There's your sheep. I love it. I love what you did. You did a great job. It says draw two more sheep looking the other direction or looking at each other. That is wonderful. Oh, you're kissing him? Oh, my goodness. He does that. I have seen him do it before. Yes. You need a kiss. Thank you very much. I love you very much. All right, let's get back to this business now. Now we're ready to paint. I'm warmed up. You're warmed up. We're ready to roll. So now that same idea is how we are going to do the um, same idea. We're going to do the monkey. I'm keeping my color wheel close by just in case I need it. Now, you can find it on the internet. You might have this kind of thing at home called a book. <laughs> a book. And I go to the indexes and I find the word ostriches. No. What's he called? Monkey. There it is. Monkey and apes. It says page 64. If you don't if you haven't got a book at home, that's all right. I understand sometimes that is not something that we have these days. But when I opened it up in my book of reference, I came up with all of these. This is called 20 Ways to Draw a Cat. Look at all those. You know, when I put this on line tonight, you can stop it right there and you can draw all of those for practice if you want to. I do not have copyrights to this. I'm hoping this group, whoever is looking at it's not going to turn me in just you know I'm doing the best I can with what I've got because that's what all of us are doing that's what all of you moms are doing who are doing homeschooling hang in there this is the right thing to do um, we're we're doing the right thing and I'm glad you're here now when I look at my monkeys and I get my ideas on how I want to draw my monkey and I want you to check out orangey no don't be shy orangey is being shy Turn around. They want to see your face. Please. Please turn around so they can see your face. Oh, good. All right. So when you're drawing, you've got long arms. You've got a body. You've got legs. Man, if I could do that, somebody would be impressed. 
I'll just tell you right now. And so then when you do this, you've got another leg down here and you've got a tail. Turn around, honey. There you go. He's wiggling his tail. He's hilarious. So I also see that I've got this part in the center here. I've got this part called a muzzle. And I've got his eyes. Look at the top. A little bump right up there. Kind of like the letter, the number three. He's got ears. Oh, you cl you cleaned your ears today, didn't you? After your shower, I'm so proud. I am so proud of you. Yay for you. All right, so here we go. Now, Orangey, hang out right here on my neck, just like I've been telling you to do. So just hang out right there. He's kissing you. I knew he was going to do that. Orangey, thank you. <gasps> Did you see his nose? Can you see that nose? All right, we're going to draw that kind of nose, too. I'm excited about this. So I've got my, uh, where is it? Here it is. I have got my board that I'm going to paint on. Now it is just a canvas. You could use a piece of paper if you want to. You don't have to use a uh, canvas board. I understand we're kind of on the short side. I am going to use, I like to use chalk, you know, Chalk is very easy to erase, and I'm going to put him on, and I've got a smaller canvas than I typically do because I don't want to run out of space. So I'm going to make Orangey's head, his body, his legs, his other arm, his other arm. I might give him to hold something. He might be holding a paintbrush today. I'm not sure. We'll just see. So, um, I'm going to give Orangey his head, and I'm drawing it right now with a chalk. After I get it about like I like it, can y'all see that? I don't know. It's about that big. So, when I draw, it's about that big. I'm saying it's about three fingers big on my 8 by 10 page, okay? So, I... That's about how big it is right there. And then I'm going to make his body. And remember, his body kind of scooped down and came back up. So it's like a U. If you didn't get it just right, erase it. Erasing with a paintbrush is a great way to do chalk. You still see it. I know you still see it. But you know where it is. You blow it, you're going to get dust. Did you see that happen? So check. Where are you at? Is it a good idea to do that? Think ahead. In here, it's okay. But at home, you need to check. You need to check. All right, so now I'm going to make the muzzle part of my monkey. And so the muzzle part is that front part. Oftentimes, we try to figure out how can we make... His nose looks like it's coming forward. This is how. Draw another circle on the inside. So it will look something like that. All right. So three, two, one. And then we're going to make his ears. Monkey's ears can be big or small. Depends on the kind. That's a small set of ears. You want big monkey ears, you put big monkey ears. It looks a whole lot like a bear at this point. What's going to change him from being a bear to a monkey is the length of his legs. The length of his leg. Orangey. The length of his leg. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Length of his legs. So... They could be kind of wiggly because monkeys do that, but they do have knees. Monkeys have knees. Monkeys have ankles. Monkeys have feet. They have opposable thumbs. See, we have four fingers and a thumb. And so this monkey has that same situation. So I'm going to draw almost like it is a long oh that even looks like a tail it could be a tail 
but I'm going to make a tail coming up here and curling. So that's one of his legs. Here's his other leg. And I'm making them kind of long. They almost look like noodles. They could be noodles. Okay. Now then, on this arm, I'm going to have this one really high up. So I'm going to put his arm up. He has elbows, too, in his hand. So I'm drawing them kind of like elbows in hand. Okay. And over here, I'm going to put this one down. Because they don't all have to be up. And he, he's going to hold a paintbrush in a little while. He's adorable. Now, I'm also orangey. Show him yourself. Okay, good. Do you see how orangey has this part right here? Okay. So we want to draw that part in like this. All right, so there it is. So you've got big arms, legs. Looks like a little person with ears. It's looking cute. It's looking cute, isn't it? All right, so now, once we've got arms and legs, and now let's put in a tail. Let's put in a tail. Now, when I'm gonna do the tail, I wanna think about it may, maybe, maybe this up here is going to be, I don't know, a, a tree branch. Maybe he's hanging by his tail. So his tail, I call these super sixes. Do you see how that looks like a super six? It's like an extra six. When I was teaching kindergarten, I would say, sing, um, down and give it a whirl, down and give it a whirl, down and give it a whirl to make the number six. Orangey remembers that song from back when I taught kindergarten. I love it. Do you love it? Yeah, we are. We're getting there. You, you're adorable today. Thank you for coming in. We miss Grayson, but, you know, we're doing our part for social distancing right now. Maybe she can come back as this gets better. All right. Now, you're, I know what you're saying to me. You're saying, Miss Keller, where are the eyes? You forgot the eyes. Well, I haven't forgot them. Remember, I like to use that secret weapon. It's coming up. A secret weapon on the eyes but if you need to put the eyes on I hear you I feel you do this put two little sleeping eyes if you put something else that's fine and then I'm going to take the number three and lay it right here for his nose I'm gonna let it stand up right there can you see his nose look at that so he's sleeping and he has a nose. Now, unlike the owl the other day that we did, remember that owl? He's back here. By the way, if you didn't get to see that, that was the day of that thunderstorm and I had to do two parts. So, and then there was something else that happened with the other one that I had to do two parts. I think I figured out my problems, but <laughs> let's just be real. Things happen. But that owl, remember the nose and the mouth were the same thing? Uh, it's true. But the monkey doesn't. Monkey has a smile. Maybe he's going to have teeth. I don't know. Now over here, I want to put in a paintbrush. He's going to hold a paintbrush. Maybe yours needs to hold a banana or a cell phone or another monkey's hand if you have a bigger piece of paper you could got my monkey pretty much set ready to roll and i'm going to add now my background color now if you only have watercolors at home you can do this with watercolors i'm going to use acrylic paint with this one because it works better but if you have tempera tempera paint usually 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 washes out but acrylic does not. So I'm saying that possibly go ahead and make sure you've got on an apron. Make sure you've got a plan for if your paint gets on your clothes or your shoes. I like to kick my own shoes off. I don't, I, I know, Orangey, put your feet down. Orangey does not have feet, he's showing you. 
<laughs> I mean shoes. He has feet. <laughs> yes, he has feet, but he does not have shoes on. Maybe he should. It's not cold. We're fine. Kick your shoes off. I think free toes make good paintings. Not free toes like scoop and eat free toes, but free, free toes. Oh, another lesson you can learn from mom. Some words mean the same and some words sound the same, but they mean something different. That happens in art all the time, all the time. Remember the word repetition, 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 repetition. Repetition is a word that means one thing, repeating, but it can mean in art, doing it again and again and again, like drawing when we drew that sheep earlier today. Now, let's do this. Um, we've got a, a background color. You choose your color. You do you. I'll do me. If you're going to choose yellow, then your banana can't be yellow. Keep that in your brainwave. So I'm putting that back. Do you want your um, orangey? No, I just meant it, the monkey. You don't have to pop up. Thank you for the kiss. I love you. I love you very much. I'm glad you came to play with the children today. Orangey. Orangey. Sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. There we are. Good job. You're doing a great job. Now, I'm not going to pick orange. I'm not going to pick yellow. I could pick blue. I could pick purple. I could pick gr green. Dig in the color green. These are my colors I'm going to use in my color wheel over here for orangey. So I think I'm going to use green in my background. Now, you don't always have to use the neighbors and the ones next door. You can use opposites on the color wheel. Opposites on the color wheel make the other colors boop, boop. Your opposites of orange would be blue. Orangey will really pop. If I use some blue in there and I might I might use blue polka dots let's just see because you know when you're an artist you get to kind of make the rules it's one of the reasons I love being an artist is because I get to kind of make the rules myself now I have put some green paint start with about the size of a quarter don't go overboard save that paint you can always squirt more out it's hard to get it back in the bottle it's like ants once you get them out of the little hole getting them back in the hole is not so easy but you put your Never mind, that's another story. Let's go up here to the top and let's begin this painting. And I'm going to paint around my monkey. Now, I'm getting into some little tight spaces. Tight spaces. I don't want to paint in those tight spaces with my big brush. Okay, I'm coming back up here where I started, where I had extra. Do you see how I'm getting it? And I'm coming around, and I'm coming down here. I'm getting some of this extra. Go get some of this extra. Scoop it up. We can always change brushes. If you don't have brushes, use a Q-tip. Use your fingers. Okay. I've got an idea that we're going to use a fork coming up. It's so fun. I have so many ideas of things to do with you. I know we all want this virus to stop. And when it's all said and done, you can come hang out with me at my studio and do art lessons too. Because I will start back up after school art lessons and summer camps. And, um, you know... You'll already know how to do most of this stuff, and we'll just get really busy and creative. I think this is going to work out for everyone somehow. Now, if you accidentally, oh, see how I accidentally went over too much of his leg? Don't panic, because paint forgives. It's my favorite part. Well, okay, there's a lot of favorites to painting. But don't worry. We'll just paint back over it when we get there. Painting right along this side. I'm painting up here. I'm getting some of these chunks. Chunky monkey. Chunky monkey. I'm getting some chunks of paint off. And then I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to come right along this side. I like to paint the edges of my canvas. If you got your package of these, 
and you're painting paint the edges of your canvas you know what you could show me your COVID-19 gallery oh would you if you do this today a couple of you have been doing it and I'm so thankful for that would you go ahead when you're done and post in the comments pictures of what you did I love to see them makes my heart happy and I bet Orangey will be so excited Orangey you're being delightful and listening and doing such a great job now I'm not through but I've got quite a bit of it done I have run out of paint and I have a dirty brush this big brush is too big for the rest of my little spaces you have to change your brush you get the right size brush for the right size job so if you don't have a smaller brush if you don't have a smaller brush, you could use a Q-tip. Uh, one mom the other day said, we didn't have any brushes, but I used my makeup brushes. That's a great idea. Just wash them out. Get the paint out really good. Use you some good soap. Um, hair soap works great because what is a brush? Hair that's been trimmed off. Hello? Synthetic. Okay, okay, okay. Another lesson. Another lesson you can learn. Just take it right on off. I call those teachable moments. Now I'm coming inside here into my little spaces. And I'm using my brush to get inside there. I go right up to it. And I'm trying to hide my chalk. I'm getting these little places inside here called peekaboos. Check your neighbor if you're doing it with your brother or sister. Don't tell them, you didn't do it right. Try this for instead. Try these words. Oh, I see a peekaboo. Do you know where it is? And if they don't know, gently say, right there. Like, right there. Oh, yeah, that's right. See, if you're nice to them, it's just a better idea. Just a better idea. I have another monkey friend that came and talked about being nice. Her name is Goldie. Orangey and Goldie used to hang out with me when I taught at Annie Pearl Elementary School. I taught there 10 years as kindergarten teacher. And then I became the art teacher at Annie Pearl. And uh, that was exciting times back then. I taught 1,042 students every week. Between Monday and Friday, I saw 1,042 students. They were kindergarten and first grade only. Back at that time, all of Georgetown was um, kindergarten and first grade were all at one school, which was, I'm sure, supposed to be a good idea. And it was till all of us wanted to do dinosaur unit on the same day. And there were 24, I believe, maybe 23, um, kindergarten teachers in 25 or 20, somewhere in there, 20. There was one more kindergarten, there's one more first grade teacher than there was kindergarten teachers at that time and we had 20 in our classes or more that was a scream good times good times shout out to my kindergarten teachers some of you might be some of my uh, second generation art kids I love that you bring your children back to me after I've had you if you look on my Facebook you see some of those Sarah Marriott brought her babies. Emily Hansen brought her babies. I know, it's so fun. I love to see your second, my second generations. Now, do you see him? He is pretty swell. I got pretty close all the way around. Everything looks pretty fun. Okay. Now, here we are. We're going to take our brush and go into the water. Whoops need water you don't have to use bottled water I happen to have it here again because I forgot to get water so I'm just gonna put a little and take a drink yes you can have some too oh good he had a little bit he does get thirsty we have to take a break once in a while it's just what you do I like my background to dry a little bit anyway so now I'm going to go and I'm going to get my water and I go to the bottom. Now you, I hold my bucket of water with my hand. I'm not holding it 
but I'd keep it on the table and lots of swooshing. Touch the bottom. Write your name. K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y. Most of the time, your brush is clean by that time. If your name is Kim, because I used to go by Kim, I might have to write my last name at the time. Uh, when you're done, you can lick it. No, don't lick it. No, don't lick it. No, 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 no. Don't lick it. Take your finger. I can't see. Take your finger. You can take your finger and pinch it. Do you see that drip that happened just then? Little drip. And that flattens your brush. Look how flat. Oh, it is so sharp that way. Isn't that nice? It's nice and sharp. That way, I've got a flat brush on this side for a big line and I can turn it this way and make it skinny. If you don't have a flat brush and you have a round brush, you just rub it like this. And it makes it pointy. You can do that. Now, I said I was going to use orange and yellow. You do whatever color you want to do. Orangey is orange and yellow. So I'm putting out the size approximately of a dime. So I'm not getting too much. Y'all see that? Just a little bit. I can always add. Always add. By the way, do you see? I kind of stayed off of the whole thing of the plate. I'm not going to paint much on the plate. I want to try to be able to use just one plate per painting. It's your goal. One plate per painting. In fact, you can always let it dry and tomorrow use that same plate again because it will have created a flat surface. I don't know if y'all have been to my studio or not, but all of my tables are covered in paint. I let it become its own beautiful piece of art. That's good. Let that happen. Now, the center of orangey is yellow. So I'm going to paint this part yellow. Now right now this is a very flat looking color. I'm not giving him any texture. He's just getting this plain, simple, flat texture to him. If I wanted to make texture to him, I could. Here I'm going to add to his face. I've covered up his nose. A little bit of that chalk has mixed in with my paint. Depending on what color, you've learned a lesson there. Artist or scientist, we play a lot of what would happen if. I'm going to put a little orange in his ears. I might cover it all back up. But I can always put it in and take it away. If you want his tail orange, you do those things. I'm Now I'm going to move over. I did not wash my brush. I kept it in the yellow. I can pick up a little yellow and a little orange at the same time. And I can come up here and I can start to make this beautiful, bright yellow and orange mixed together. Make this really prettiness. All of my mixing, by the way, happens on my canvas. The reason that it happens on the canvas is then I don't have to cute. Then I don't have to um, waste space on my plate. Do you see? I'm just scooping up, scoop it up like mashed potatoes and gravy or chocolate ice cream and vanilla syrup. Wait, try that again. <sighs> you can do vanilla ice cream and chocolate syrup. Do you see how I'm really not scrubbing much either? I'm also kind of dabbing. Dabbing. I'm dabbing, and I'm going outside the edge there just a little bit. I'm going to go right in between where his chin and his mouth are at. Orangey is showing you. See how it has it right underneath there. Lean back a little more. There you go. So... Right in here, I've just put a little more right in that space to separate the two. By the way, painting 
is great for your right brain. Try to always do some kind of art activity before you do any kind of testing. So if you have to take a spelling test, do some drawing first. Um, the reason that you want to do that before, it wakes up that brain, wakes up your right brain. Another really cool thing is brush your teeth with your other hand before you have to take any kind of test. It, it just makes that brain go boop, 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 orangey, boop. I can't say boop, and otherwise you jump. Honey, sit down. We're almost done. Good job. Thank you. Doing a great job hanging in there. I know you just want to go play in Miss Poppies. Everybody does. Everybody does. All right, so then come over here, and I'm coming around the tail. I'm still just painting away. I could add a little bit of yellow to give it a nice little highlight. Look at that. Did a little green or whatever color your background was, did that get in there? Don't worry. You can go over it a second time. You can go over it a second time. Second times are great. Do it again. Do it again. Oh, there it is. Painting, painting. I forgot to call George and ask George Mecca if I could use his music uh, that he and his band make together so that I had some music to play in the background because I can't play it with mute with uh, copyright laws. But I will tell you, um, anybody that has a band you'd like for me to play the music to, if, as long as I don't get in trouble, I'd love to listen to music while we paint. I think it's very therapeutic. Just, you know, I've nearly forgotten about all that commotion going on everywhere. Isn't Orangey looking adorable? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is so exciting. Look how beautiful you are. I knew you were going to be excited. Thank you very much. All right, hang in there. I've only got three visitors right now. And so here's what I'm going to say before y'all all... all fire off on me uh do this wash out your brush and then let's re-watch this with whatever supplies you need and um on my website it should be there tomorrow it only da downloads at night time and um i'm not on the the pay program that i can get it uploaded immediately it costs too much money for that for me right now so I'm on the only does once a day. So let it let it do its thing. All right, I think I've got all my little um, things out of the way. I'm going to go ahead real quick and slip in his eyes with my secret weapon. Orangey's eyes are black. So I'm going to use my secret weapon. My secret weapon is the back end of my brush. The back end of my brush. So I hit that back end of the brush. I've got uh, black on the bottom of it. I'm going to go to his eyes. Let me see your eyes. Turn around. Look at me. Oh, they're orange with a little black in the center. And I see those whites. All right, so I'm going to put in a little dot here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stir it a little bit. Just put a little stir right in there. Okay. Got his eyes. He's pretty cute. I am then going to use a uh, skewer. You could use a skewer. You could use a Q-tip. Uh, you could use um, a toothpick. You can use something small, even a stick. Go outside and get you some sticks. It'll work. And so I'm going to put the dot with this with the skewer in here. Go back up here, and I'm going to give Orangey some. Uh, lashes cute i'm going to make orangey smile and look how i ran out of paint so that just means i have to go back and get some more now one option would be is to use sharpie markers but you have to wait till your paint dries if you don't wait till your paint dries you have to wait till your paint dries. 
or you will ruin your marker. Hmm. I can make the nose. That's that three that was laying down like this. That's pretty cute. I could give him some toenails. Remember I said monkeys, apes, they all have five little holes and not four. That's why my cats love me because I have thumbs and can open their cat food. One, two, three, four, five. If you made six, here's what you can do. Wait till it dries. Wait till it dries. Wait till it dries. And then go back and paint over it. They also have mom there. Oh, that is so cute. Now, I told you I was going to make a paintbrush. So I've got my brush, my thing here. I think I'm going to use blue because I want to show you how that color really pops. It really pops when you add the complementary color. Remember the complementary color. Oh, Y'all, that's the same color as my dress. My Miss Frizzle dress is this color. I wore my Miss Frizzle dress today because I'm feeling very frizzle-like. Look at that. That's the same color. And um, I could put orangey in the space i could do space monkeys i could do did you know that they sent monkeys to space in the very beginning they did look that up but i'm going to paint a blue paintbrush right here so that it looks like it goes he's gonna hold it i've got a paintbrush in this hand a blue one. I like blue paint brushes. I've got it kind of skinny and it gets bigger up here. So the more you press down with your brush, then one end gets bigger and the other one gets skinnier when you pick it up. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. And then now the ends of my brush are brown. You could make the ends of your brush brown. You could make the ends of your brush black. You could make the ends of your brush red. I'm going to do... Well, I was going to do brown, and then I stuck it in the black. So now I've got black and brown on the brush at the same time. <gasps> Let's see what happens when we're scientists. Oh, I see. That's kind of cool. My black and my brown kind of made new stuff right in there. I like it. I like it. You know how to make gray, right? Gray is when you mix black and white together. That makes gray. Black and white 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 makes gray. You don't have any gray on you, do you? Well, that's all right. But the ferrule, the part of the brush that has the metal on it, this part right here is called the ferrule. Ferrule. Sounds like farrier. If you um, are a horse person, you know what a farrier is. It's someone who puts on the shoes on the horse. Did you know shoes? horses wear shoes? It's true. Horseshoes. Look it up. Look it up. Every day we learn something new. I'm going to put my little ferrule right here so that it looks a little bit more like a paintbrush. I'm using the back end of my brush. It's very stiff and it holds your paint. I wipe it off each time. Now, he's got a cute little paintbrush and it looks like he's got his hand open. If I wanted it to look like he has got his thumb through it, I'm just going to come in here with some orange and yellow, and I'm going to put an orange thumb across it. Oh, that looks a little yellow, doesn't it? But now he's holding it like this. 
That's called overlap. Overlap, do you see? Overlap. So you just have to put that little bit of overlap, overlap on. I'm going to dig out a little more orange because I'm out of orange on my palette. Always squirt out a little bit. Look. Okay. I'm just saying, try that. You save your paint, then you don't have to go back to the store. Remember, I have some supplies out in the backyard. If you really can't go to the store, either because of money or because of um, you can't get near people because some folks are more likely to get sick than others, uh, text me, 512-635-7936. I'll put it somewhere. Y'all send me an email at paintwithme.kimberlykeller at gmail.com and I will make sure you get some of whatever you need. Okay? I'll help you out. Never sweat it. Hey, eyebrows. I could put eyebrows on orangey. Orangey has this little round part right here. And I didn't put that part on his face yet. So I can go back because paint forgives and lets you do it again. And I could put that around up here. Or this could be Orangey's cousin instead of Orangey. This is maybe Eugene. And look how I'm adding a few more things to it, making it just a little bit cute. I kind of like that. Sometimes we get started and we think that from the very beginning it has to be exactly right. That's not true. In art, you get to go back. And you can paint on it again and you can paint again and you can paint again and right on that edge right there maybe <laughs> thank you and adorable adorable and um i'm kind of liking that now i could keep playing you keep playing. You can make him... Oh, look, he's getting a little fuzzier. Isn't he getting fuzzier? He's getting cuter. I want him to look like he's been dripped in the purple paint. So I clean off my brush again. Get a little squish of purple. Or maybe pink. Or maybe both colors. And I'm going to put a couple of puddles on him. How do you make something look like it's dripping? Well, you could drip it. That works really well. Or... I like to say it's kind of like raindrops. Raindrops keep falling on my hair. Look at it dripping. And so when I make that dripping, it's just dripping down here. It might get on his fur or it might fall behind. I don't know. Do you see how they look like puddles? And then it's going to fall right down here and make a big, giant puddle. And it's dripping behind him. And I'm dabbing. Instead of swoosh, 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 I'm just making a puddle with some dabs. And that, you know, spilt purple paint. He is telling y'all some wonderful things today. I have enjoyed playing with you. This has been great fun. I'm going to put a sprinkle on a little glitter because I love glitter. And um, I know there's some around here. There's some purple glitter. And so I'm going to sprinkle a little glitter on. Anytime you sprinkle glitter on, make sure where you're putting it is okay. Because once it gets there, it stays. I do something called a glitter dance, and I put my hand underneath, and I do like that, and I make the glitter kind of hop around before I dump it off. If it hops around a little bit, can you see it hopping? I call it the glitter dance, and then not as much falls off. Now, you take it to the trash can, and you go, bonk, bonk, bonk. Can you hear it? Bonk, bonk, bonk in the trash can, and the extra glitter falls off. Looks like Orangey has had a little bit of, of glitter on him. He's adorable. He's ready to go. I do spray it uh, with a clear spray to keep the glitter on. When we're in art class, I also use a Sharpie marker to sign my name and to put the year. 
You can put it in cursive writing or you can put it in print. Feel like I want something up here? Don't know what I might put up there, but you tell me. What will you put up there? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Had such a good time. Becky Fisher, I'm glad you're awake. What did I do that made a lot of sounds? Was that the phone? I bet it was the phone. Hello. Goodbye. Uh, Y'all have a great day. I'll see you soon. We'll play again Wednesday at 1.30 or maybe tomorrow or maybe later this afternoon and do some adult stuff. Uh, stay safe. Hug only those folks that are under your roof. And um, I just started. You did too. Have a great day. Love you.